Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can set up a password pusher server um, so that you can use that to share your passwords with like one time clicks and stuff like that. Um, so that you can essentially share a credential that you need to share with either like a family member or a friend member for um, like a school project or something um, and make it a little bit more secure than putting in your password in like a Google Doc and then trying to share a Google Doc that you know, may accidentally be public or something of that sort. So, um, we're going to do that and have some fun. So, this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So, if you enjoy my content and want to sponsor me or send me some free swag, let me know. My email is in the description below. So, let's get started, guys. All right. So, um, the first thing that we'll do is log into our server so we can get some software installed. And then we'll do some prereq stuff. So, root uh, 172, I think, what, 65 now? Yeah, I think we're 65 now. Yeah, password pressure. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do is install Docker. So we're gonna use uh, their Docker image to essentially get this working. So we're gonna add the Docker repository here so we can download Docker. Docker.com slash Linux CentOS docker.ce.repo. So we'll add the repo. We'll uh, install Docker CE for the community edition. We'll let that install. That will take a few seconds. While that happens, we will update our DNS via our GitLab project, which will essentially update this file and then push it out to uh, my DNS server and restart my DNS service. Um, so the first thing that we will do here is update the serial and then add password pusher in here in a and add the IP 65. And then we will commit this change Pas password pusher. Word pusher. All right, and we'll commit that. So that will run through the pipeline and update our DNS. Um, and then we'll go and look up password pusher. So if you don't want to host it yourself, um, they actually do have it where you can just use it here. Um, they actually have a site that you can use it. Um, if you're a little bit more security conscious, they want to know that you keep your data and everything, um, you can host it yourself, right? Um, but you can go to pwpush.com um, and this is exactly the same interface. So, but I'm gonna show you how you can install it. So we'll go back and we'll actually go to their GitHub repo. Um, so down here, there's, there's a few ways that you can uh, install it, but we're gonna kind of go with like the simplest on Docker, we're going to use the ephemeral temporary database because honestly, at the end of the day, you're just sharing a password like usually once or twice, maybe, um, but you don't really want to keep the data, right? Like, it doesn't make any sense to really keep the data um, because you don't want your passwords to really be stored anywhere else. So, we're going to go with this. But if you have like an external database, you can do that. Um, there's a Docker Compose and other things here that you can do, but we're going to just stick with this here. So, what we'll do is copy that. Um, Docker is still installing, so we'll give it a few seconds here, and it finished. So we'll do systemctl enable docker and systemctl start docker. Um, so what we're going to do is actually create a file called startdocker.sh. Um, we will paste the contents of what it has. Um, so essentially it'll run doc command, it'll run it in detach, it'll open port 5100 to 5100 on the server and pull the image down. Um, this is a little bit easier just to kind of use. So what we'll do is chmod start docker and then we'll just run it so that it will essentially pull the image. It'll essentially just run the command, nothing too fancy. Um, but in this case, that way, if you need to ever reference it back in the future, like your, your thing restarts and your container doesn't come back up, you can use it to spin up another container. So now we can see in here that we have the container open um, and it's open on this. But the problem here is it's essentially it's, it's listening on HTTP 5100. So if you're you know dealing with anything, you don't want anything in HTTP. You always want HTTPS because it's more secure and your traffic is encrypted. So when you're sharing passwords, you want your password to be encrypted through the tra through the traffic, not unencrypted. So what we will do here is install nginx, um, and we will actually create a cert from our CA server here. Um, but you know, it depends if you create your, if you get your set from like Digicert or like using less encrypt, those are other ways to do it. But I do have a CA server for this purpose here. Um, ca.dragon.local and we will log in here. And then what we'll do is make directory password pusher 
we'll change to that and we will do step CA certificate. So I'll create a certificate for a password push it dot dragon dot local. Then we need it to output the key. So I'm just gonna name it the same thing. Uh, I mean the site and then the key. I always think the key goes second for some odd, re odd reason. Push it dragon dot local dot key. So then I'll pat Ask for the provision of password, um, which we have in our vault warden. So we'll log in here real quick. Drag it at local. Ooh, I think this is my password. Okay, yeah, that's my password. And for some odd reason, I think in this cache session, it, it doesn't appear every single time I log in the first time. <laughs> but that's okay. So we will paste that key and we have that. So now we'll copy those, those over to our password pusher server yes all right so now we don't need our certificate authority server anymore everything is in here so now we should actually be able to see we got our cert and we got our key so we're going to make the directory uh etsy pki nginx private private um, and then we'll move our cert to just Etsy PKI Nginx and we'll move our key to Etsy PKI Nginx private. So then we got all that set up. Now we need to actually edit the Nginx configuration. So Etsy Nginx Nginx.conf. We will scroll down to the bottom, shift G if you're using Vi or Vim, it's actually quite nice. And we'll uncomment the SSL section. Um, oh. Um, I think it looks like that, yep. So, give me one second. Oh, God. Ooh. There we go. Comment that out, comment that out. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now we've, we've uncommented everything. And we'll update the certificate here. So we'll update the cert to be what we had earlier, um, which was password pusher dot dragon dot local dot cert. And then we'll update the key password pusher dot dragon dot local dot key. And then we will update the location. So this will essentially be a proxy pass to HTTP localhost 5100. Um, then we'll need to actually set up a few more things. Um, and I think this is actually in here. So we might actually just copy and paste it in here. There is, um, go to file and we want Nginx. Um, so in the containers, examples, password push, uh, and Nginx, we'll go to this Nginx.conf and we'll actually copy these other proxy settings here. Um, the reason for this is so that it actually forwards like the actual correct things over. And so then when you actually get the link, it will actually get the correct link and actually set it to HTTPS and set it to actually the, the correct domain. So we're gonna paste all that in here. Um, I'm gonna just tap it over here real quick. Um, Okay, and then we'll save. Then we can do a system CTL restart in Jinx. So now with that, we should be able to do HTTPS password pusher dot dragon dot local. And we can see it's actually secure, which is great as HTTPS encrypted and everything. So now you essentially can use it. Um, and to use it, there's a few things I was just gonna go through this kind of quick. It's not, there's not much to it. It's kind of pretty self-explanatory. Um, but you can see that there are two settings here. You can set the expiration link to delete after seven days or five views, whichever come first. Um, or you can set it to like a one view. So when you send the link, whoever clicks it, will get to see the password and you're good. Um, you got two other things that you can allow media deletion after it's once pushed. So like if, you know, someone sees it, but you set it to like four views, they can delete it immediately. Um, so then we can kind of show you here. So like, say for example, that's that's the password, we push it and someone had, and then you give this link. So it'll expire seven days or four views, um, but it, it can also be deleted. So you can see 
you go to the link, you kind of get something like this where the password's blurred out, you can click on it and you can see the password or you can just click copy to keyboard, uh, copy to clipboard, not keyboard, um, and then just paste it uh, and then you can see that it's just copied and you can see that the password's there so you don't even need to view it. Um, you can now hit this to delete it or if you were to refresh, you can see that the number of views actually go down. So I refreshed two more, refreshed one more, refreshed no more, this is the last time it can be viewed, and now the link has been expired. So that's a kind of an easy way to kind of share your link, know that your data is hosted on your own server, um, and make sure that it is encrypted across the traffic. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.